Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. So often I look at my game shelves and we're talking with the game group as what games we want to play and so often we look at the box and we go, ooh, I'd really love to play that one. Why don't we play it so often? Well, it takes forever to set up and pull down and there's a ton of components. And by the time we set that up and relearn the rules and play it, you know, by the time we do all that, we probably could have played two other games that we really love that doesn't take all that extra time. And so some of these games that we actually love stay on the shelf and that is wrong. So uh, I, today we're gonna show you some custom inserts that will help solve that problem. They're from inserthere.me, that's their website. And they recently changed from uh, doing foam inserts to all their new ones are gonna be plastic inserts or 3D printed plastic inserts. And I wanna disclaim here that Insert Here has helped me in the past in Kickstarter campaigns that I've run for my own channel, offering inserts to backers. So I wanted to make that relationship known to you as well at the beginning of this video. So uh, I was received uh, four different inserts for different games, one of which was my strategy game of the year, Whistle Mountain from Bezier Games that has a ton of components. So I'm gonna show you these four games and what these inserts do to it and why they are cool. And I'll see you on the other side. All right, first we're gonna take a look at Whistle Mountain. This one has a ton of components in it. Let's show you what it looks like before the insert. Okay, this is literally how I have it. I've got some extra bags, but basically it's just bags. I have everything bagged in different bags. This game came with a lot of good bags. Uh, we have the pieces here. So I basically just have everything bagged, all the boards at the bottom, uh, and there we go. So that's how it looked before. All right, there's all the components in its glory. There's tons of them here. Here we have resources, the different types here. We have the scoring markers. We have the upgrade tiles. We have all the different, three different style of Tetris pieces where there's room at the bottom to stick your finger in there, even in these ones here, to get these out very easily. Uh, we have the different starting uh, tiles for the abilities. We have the cards, the different machines. Again, leaving room at the bottom of each of these to easily get them out with your fingers. Then we have you know the water and the you know, the plastic pieces that hold the water. Now, one of the main uh, Im improvements or things that Insert Here always does is many of the trays uh, are, are intended to be taken out and used out at the table. For example, this one just comes out. You take it out, you put it by the table, you have all your resources right here. Easy setup, easy pickup. You just use that right by the table. You're taking your goods at the end of the game. You just put them right back in just like that. Same with this. We're gonna have the scoring tokens. We're gonna just place those out by the table. Now, beneath these, we have more compartments that will come out. We have all the player colors with their three different airships and all their meeples. Boom, just give one to each player, makes it a lot faster. Now below those, you see we have the board to so be giving these out to all the players. Now the other pieces here that come out here are the different rewards and they're face down and then the ones that you use during setup are face up just at the top of this. That makes it that nice and easy, the doubler token. Uh, and again, we just talked about all these. And uh, when I take this out, then below that, we have all of the boards, uh, the player boards and the regular boards. So that's it. I mean, setup is a snap with this and pickup is just as much a snap because most of these trays are, you know, being used as you use it. So let's go ahead here and put this thing back as if we were just finished playing. All right, well now I'm gonna take a look at the crew. So let's look at the box as normal. All right, well, here we go. I've got all the cards on one side. I've got all the tokens and the other special cards on the other side. All right, well, here is the crew set up with the plastic insert. Uh, it holds this and it actually, and much like the Whistle Mountain one, which I didn't mention, was there's plenty of room to sleeve these with premium sleeves and it will fit in here. Same with the Whistle Mountain one as well. But you, hit, you know, there's a spot for your finger here to take these out. Again, these are all removable trays. You can just take this out, put the deck in there. Same with the smaller cards. Nice little tray, you can put this out like this. And you have this out by the board or by the table there. And again, premium sleeves cards, you got plenty of room there. And then you've got the ones with the tokens. You just take this out, different types of tokens. You have the bigger ones and the player ones, and then the, the ones for the actual missions. Again, putting this by the table, quick and easy to get up and get down with this game. All right, now we're gonna take a look at King of Tokyo Dark. 
All right, I have the rules here, then we have the board, and then we have the insert here. Now what I found with this insert is these things never stay here because they just, they just fly all over the place. And it's a pain in the butt to try to figure out which one goes where. Uh, so, you know, there you have it. And all these are, are here like this, but this is, a, this is the insert that comes with the game, this little plastic insert. All right, here's the new insert here, plastic insert for King of Tokyo Dark. Uh, and much like you've seen in his other features, different things can come out. So these have the different tokens. These are the ones I was showing that always fall out of the other one. Different tokens here, pull this out, put it right out on the table, boom, you're there to play just like that. This one also just pulls out, you get the dice and you get the different ability tiles that go with the new mechanism in the game, boom, right by the table. And you've got this, which has all the different monsters. You can pass this around the table, allow them to pick the monster wheel they want. Of course, down here, we have the tokens for the energy. More tokens here, again, putting them right there. So you can just play and put down right when you're done. Here we have the cards, again, lots of room for the premium sleeves on this. And you can pick this up, pass it around, let them pick the monster, again. And then below here we have the board and the rules. So again, everything is very functional. Now this one did have a custom insert, but as you can see, it didn't really work well because things were, they were spilling around everywhere and you can't really use this to pass around to the players and such. So this just makes it a lot quicker and easier to get it to the table. And lastly, I'm gonna show you the insert for Custom Hero. So let's take a look at the box as it comes. So in the box, you have all the foldable character shields. Take those out. We have the cards and here. We have the little uh, advancements that are in this bag here. Uh, and then below those, I had all the advancements. And then I just have tokens that literally were always just spilled everywhere around everything. Uh, and then we have the cards here that are sleeved. And I had some baggies and stuff with more sleeves. So eh, it kind of worked, but it was always a mess and the thing spilled out everywhere. Okay, here we have it with the new plastic insert from insert here. Uh, here we have, again, token trays. Pull them out, pass them off, put them in the middle of the table. And it has this nice little, uh, you know, pickup here that you're using to pick this tray up. Again, put them out right by the table. Uh, in here, again, this can come out as well. Here we have all of the normal cards. Uh, and here I have both all of the advancements and the advancements themselves and the extra sleeves are at the bottom of this and everything fits nice. Now with this game, you take out a certain amount of cards depending on the amount of players, a certain amount of set of cards. And so a lot of times I have this game set up for two players um, and I have all the rest of the you know, stuff put here. So you have the, the flexibility because you have so much room here and these are already sleeved, right? Because this game comes sleeved. And uh, you have the ability to you know, take out certain sets if you always, if you most likely play with two or three players or whatever, you can take those sets out, put them below this, because uh, you have plenty of room there as well. Uh, and this can go on top if you like. So there we go. And when you're putting it back in, I mean, simply just put it back in just like this, like that, easy to play. And then you can put the covers like that, the rules like that, and that is it. All right, well, there you have the inserts. Yes, I gotta tell you that Whistle Mountain one, woof, that is always a bear to set up. And it's one of those games I said at the beginning where it's like, woof, you better be invested. You must really love that game. And I do love that game to, to, cause there's a lot of components of a lot of setup and rebagging and unbagging and all that stuff took a lot of time. I love that now I can just take those things out, give everyone their trays, uh, you know, to, for, for the player colors, I put different things, they get their ships, they get their meeples, boom, you get the things. I mean, all the, 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 the resources, boom, just put it right in the middle of the table. I mean, it's literally like pass out, pass out, put the little, the, you know, the tiles where they go, you're ready. I mean, it's so much faster. It, it cut it down way, less than in half. I mean, it, it's probably mm, three times quicker, if not more, than doing it with that insert. And so for games like that, it really helps. But even for the smaller games that, that, that you know, that you still need to pass things around that make it a little bit easier, like drafting monsters, things like that, it can also make it easier. So I'm all, I typically always, usually I throw inserts, the original inserts out and bag everything. And that's just the way I've done it. And it works for me. But again, for some of these games, it just doesn't make sense because you can't get to the table often. So there you have it. Now, uh, those are four different ones. Those are new ones that he's designed at insert here, uh, Robert Searing. And I wanted to show you those ones because those are the new ones that I already had the games for. I wanted to show you the plastic inserts. Uh, and so if, if, you, if you have a game that you love and you want to get at the table faster and easier, and you want to make it, you know, get to the table more often, this is a possible way to do that. 
Now, all the new inserts from them are gonna be plastic. They used to be foam. Uh, and due to the automation of plastic, turnaround times have, in, have improved there. I have to insert here. Uh, they're also open to special requests and working with customers uh, to produce something that's not on their website. Uh, but price is always a consideration and custom inserts aren't cheap to design. It takes time to design them and, 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 and you know, prototype them and get them to work. And there's a lot of time and effort that goes into there. So they're going to cost money and price is a consideration. And so, you know, that's one thing to think about is it's definitely going to cost some money to get some of these inserts. But again, if it's a, for a game you love that will help you play it more often, then this definitely might be something for you. So you can check out their website at insertherme. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. Lucky Duck Games has four new games available now. In the Court of Miracles, you lead a guild of beggars, scheme with sinister plots, and use trickery to build your own renown in an attempt to take over 16th century Paris. Baron Voodoo is an abstract strategy game involving the collection of thematic soul dice, and it made my top 10 most anticipated releases at Essen Spiel this year. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is a tower defense with epic heroes that includes a campaign and an infinite replayability mode. It was hugely popular on Kickstarter, raising over $1 million. Chronicles of Crime 1400 is a standalone follow-up to the award-winning Chronicles of Crime, where you'll be solving four unique crimes in medieval Paris. These are all available in stores now, and you can learn more and order them at luckyduckgames.com.